Hello? Hello? How are you doing? Alright, well, I'm just going to try and get the video on. One second. Hello? Yeah. I'm here. Hi. Hi. Right. One second, Graham. I apologise. No problem. Right. Can you see us? Unfortunately, yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Well, thanks for taking the time to speak to us. Uh, we've got our, our GCCP class here, and obviously we, when we were chatting on the phone earlier, we were going to talk about how technology is used in professional level sport. Your experience with using it as a as a, a player in the in the Premiership at Reading, yep, and, then, yep. and then now in your uh, your new career as a coach um, as a as, at Southampton Academy. So, do you want to talk to start with about um, the technology that you've used in sport, maybe maybe a pro zone, uh, GPS trackers, and how to monitor stuff like that? And then I'll just I'll keep yep, chipping yep. in with uh, with some questions and stuff like that. Okay. 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 Uh, good afternoon. <laughs> You don't speak. Um, um, in terms, in terms of, of playing in the Premier League, League you are the, are the most resourced, resourced league, league in the world. In the world. By that I mean you have more cameras, more analysts, more everything, more everything out of the, out of the, game, out of the game than, than any other league, league ever. ever. So, so the way the we way did it at Reading was, was we'd have, have nine, nine cameras, cameras monitoring, monitoring every game. game. There would be there specific people detailed before the game that they would be watched with a specific camera to them and them alone. In conjunction with Prozone. Prozone monitors how far you run, how fast you run, when you run, and they give you the, the stats. The stats that we had were we averaged 13 and a half kilometers a game when we won a game. When we lost a game, we averaged 14 and a half kilometers. Now, the 14 and a half kilometers meant we didn't have the ball in all. In conjunction with that, we'd have a split screen. So, if you can imagine the screen you're looking at now split into two. On, on one, one side, side we'd have the game the going on, so we could look at the video. video. On the right-hand right -hand side, side would be a graphical, graphical representation of the entirety of the, of the team moving, moving at the same time as the ball. ball. And, and we, we knew, knew that as a as back, back four, because I would defend that, if we kept the average distances between us at less than 10 metres throughout the entire game, we were 80% less likely to concede a goal against any team in the Premier League. Including, including Arsenal, Arsenal Man United, United Chelsea, Chelsea, Liverpool, Liverpool all of the big teams. teams. I, might I might even put Newcastle in there, depending on Mr. Tate's ideas. No, but, but, no chance, not after. <laughs> but we knew but that if we got our sports, sports science, science right, right, then on a on Saturday, Saturday, Saturday the game would take care of itself. itself. So, so we, we had, had an analyst sitting, sitting in the dugout every, every game, game feeding that information real time into the coaching staff. So he so would he look, look at trends, trends in the game, game and our distances at pro, 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 pro zone and, and dictate what we did in the game. game. Either, Either I was I being too adventurous as a right back, back going too far forward, forward, the back, back four was spreading too much laterally, or we were too deep as a team, they would feed that onto the sideline, the coach would step forward, and real time, so within two minutes of it happening, it would change. It's got faster than that now with the advent of GPS. Where everyone in the Southampton Academy, down to the ages of 14, will now wear a GPS tracker. Where we will look on Google Earth, we'll get the image of the globe up, zoom in down to where we are in Southampton, and I will be able to tell you at any time in the train session where you are, what you're doing, whether you're running, walking, jogging backwards, moving sideways, and the intensity and pace of your run. So there is nowhere to hide. If you are, not working as hard as you should be, I know. And I don't know just after the session, as would have been in the past, so we'd moan at you afterwards. We have an analyst in our academy that sits by the side of me and tells me who is and who isn't working hard in conjunction with GPS and heart rate monitoring because we have one of the benchmarks. All the players are VO2 max tested. Have you covered that, Mr. Tate? Yeah, we've done some of that, yeah. They've all been VO2 max tested, they've all been max heart rate tested, and they've all been comparative load tested against their peers, so we know from the benchmarks where they should be operating. They should be getting through so much load at so much, so at such and such a time in such and such a session. So if you're a right back or a centre back, you should be doing so much. If you're a forward, you should be doing so much. If you're not doing that, we have direct intervention. Don't wait. So if, so if I'm, I'm looking at Mr. Tate there and he's not running around, 
Looks like he's carrying a few pounds. I know the reason why. And the reason is, you're not working hard enough. In conjunction with that, this is where it blows my mind. Every day our academy walk into the training ground. Every single day they walk directly onto a pressure plate where they're weighed. Linked to the pressure plate is an iPad that has a series of physical and psychological questions that they must fill in. How tired are you? How did you sleep? How motivated are you? Do you have any muscle stiffness? How are you feeling? They fill that in, then they go and have their saliva taken in a pot like this big. Then they must go and have their urine taken by the sports scientist. It's not one of the best jobs, I have to say, but it's monitored. By the time they got changed, they go to the changing room after that, by the time they are changed and back into the room, their the urine level has been tested to see if they're dehydrated. Their saliva has been checked for any hormones that are pre-indicators to hit fatigue, illness or injury. And they are given a green, an amber or a red light as to whether they are allowed to train. Not whether they want to train, whether they are physically capable of sustaining the load that we expect. If they're not, we want to know why. So have they done too much? Have they not taken care of themselves at home? Are they ill or are they, are they susceptible to injury? Manchester City had this um, system in place. They have not had a muscle injury for nine months. When you think of 60 games a season, training four hours a day, to not have a muscle injury due to pulling a muscle, and nine, nine months, months is a phenomenal achievement. achievement. But, but, when you look at the cost, cost of having a player out, say, Tevez, Tevez when he's not playing golf in Argentina, say, Aguero, or Yaya Toure, Toure, monitoring the fitness of these elite athletes, athletes if you can, if you tell, can tell when, when they're, they're going to be fatigued, when, when they're going to be injured, injured, you can modify their load, or you can take them out of training totally to make sure that on Saturday game time, they're ready to go. And that is the level of detail we need to look at. Is that, is that, uh, does that happen every, every day at Salam Academy, you said? That goes down from, from 14s all the way up to the, 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 uh, the first team players, is that, is that right? From, from 16, 16, when you're when a scholar, scholar 16, 16, 17, 18, 18 in, our in our building, building up to 21, 21 in the development squad, squad and in the first team, team that, that happens, happens every single, single day. day. It, 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 it may, may not be working, working at the moment because the lads will be dehydrated because they've just had a massive promotion party, but that's what that's we need what to do. do. And in the and Premier League, League next year, they'll, they'll need to do it more. more. Because you're going into the most competitive league in the world. Do you, I mean, in, in terms of all the things you've said there, Graham, about the technology and sport, I know you, you first started a professional at York. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you think that that has um, increased the, in, in the performance level significantly uh, in terms of we are developing uh, greater young talent in the country? Um, I mean, you know, in, in terms of like, in the last 15 or 20 years, Obviously, the, you know, those things you were talking about weren't available at York City when you, you, know, when you, you started as a trainee. How, yeah, how yeah. has that changed and how, how, how is it now developing younger players then? Well, well if, you, if, you, if, you if, if you look at the technical, technical level, level, the technical, technical level, level is vastly, vastly different due to the way that we coach. coach. Um, uh, but the but the physical, physical level, level you, if you see a Premier League footballer, the thing that struck me was every single Premier League footballer that you see on TV is a unit. By that I mean the big. They're strong, they're quick, they probably have a body fat of 8% or less. They have a VO2 max of over 70%. They're quick, and to be perfectly honest, those that stand out in the Premier League for being quick or agile or tricky do that one thing to a level of excellence that hasn't been seen in football for a long, long time. There will always be the Maverick, the George Best, the Maradona, the Pele, but in terms of sheer quantity of performance and level of performance on an athletic level alone, the, the Premier League, in football terms, is unmatched in the history of the game. So the, the sheer content of physical ability that's coming out on a day-to-day -day basis is far in excess of what it has ever been. The only problem is now, how do you keep on replicating? How do you keep on making the young player of today Say the 14, 15 year old, how do you keep on making him into an awesome physical specimen that can sustain 320 days of physical training and competition a year 
How do you make him on a consistent basis, which is what the challenge is at academy level, which is what I did? Yeah, brilliant. Do you then think, in, in terms of going back to an age-old question then, in terms of people saying that um, you know, George Best would still be brilliant in this day, uh, and you know, people like that, Bobby Charlton, is that, do you, are, are you then saying that those players probably would not be able to live to the standards of, of today's game if they, were, if they were the same condition as they were then? If George they, Best were out drinking that sort of stuff, we, we if, if, well. if they were in the same condition as they were then now, now they, they could not survive in the physical environment. environment. All, all right, they will have talent, they will have wonderful talent in George Best's case, they would have ability to go past people, but the players nowadays are so much faster, so much fitter, and so much stronger that it is a whole different ballgame. It, John, I cannot, sorry, Mr. Tech, I cannot convey the level of physical excellence that the guys are developing now. In terms of, we, we test all of our kids to come in from 9 up to 18, and all the trialists, we run, we run them through, through a battery, battery of physical, physical tests. tests. We run, we run them, through them through jump tests. tests. We run them through chin up tests, tests press up tests, 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 squat tests, 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 five meter, ten, 10 meter, 20, 20 meter, 30, 30 meter sprint, sprint tests, tests, 20, 20 meter, meter agility, agility drills, drills to benchmark their level of progress. progress. And the and level of progress has increased exponentially. The sheer physical output that these guys are capable of is frankly a joke. I'm actually glad I'm retired. It's, it's to, to put a level on it, say, if you've got you've a guy in your room there, or a lady in your room there, that is a, an athlete, that is a sprinter that is top level, have you got one? Yeah, we've got a few, who wants to step forward? One of our swimmers, maybe? Anyone? Brianna, come forward. We've got a swimmer coming forward, Brianna. What was that there? Yes, we've got, we've got, a, we've got one of our swimmers. Okay, okay. okay. I'll ask you a question. question. How hard How do you have to train? Yeah, yeah, we'll just talk to How long? Uh, two hours. And what do you and do, do you in do those two hours? hours? What, do you, what do you do when you're training in two hours? What, do you, what, what sort of things are you doing? Give me a typical day. day. Okay. okay. Do you, do you, do you, do you think, think the quality of your training, training would, be would be better if you had a dedicated, dedicated coach, coach analyzing, analyzing every aspect, aspect of your performance, performance for every moment, moment of that training? training. Yeah. Do, you do you think if they, they saw, saw the slightest little bit wrong, wrong and they changed, changed it real, real time to make you more efficient and more powerful, powerful you would be faster? Be faster. Yeah. You may you have the potential within you to be the very, very next, next Rebecca, Rebecca Adlington, Adlington or whoever, whoever to, go to go on and be world, world class. class. If you if get you the get level of support, support that I'm talking, talking about, about, we could do, do that for you. The problem is, is it's only happening to an elite few. few. Unless, Unless you're, you're in, in an academy, academy program in football or a GB team evolution program, you're not going to get the level of support we can offer you on a day-to-day basis to make every single aspect of your performance, performance elite level. level. So you so may you have, have wonderful have technique. technique, you may you have, have wonderful, wonderful, wonderful staying power. power, but well, I, I guarantee that if we were coaching you every second of every day, everything, everything about your performance would go up. I'm not talking about 100%, I'm talking 10% in every area. How fast would you be if I gave you 10% more leg speed, 10% more leg power, 10% more efficient movement, would you, would you then be on a different plane to where you are now? Yeah. That's only That's three elements, John. Yeah. If we then we looked at the way, way, the way to breathe, the, the stroke as it hit the water, with, with cameras we've got in our new training facility, we've got a treadmill in our swimming pool. So that when someone's coming back from a, a leg injury, we can assess their running style on the treadmill. It's got two cameras on it, one from the front, one from the south side, that we can assess their stroke as they run. Now, if you had that on your swimming, on every stroke, your coach can then give details, real-time feedback as to where to place your hand in the water to make it more efficient. Every single second of every single stroke. So if so you take George, George Best as, as, as an example, example, you take his lifestyle life out of it, it, you make him the physical, physical specimen that, say, Cristiano Ronaldo, Ronaldo is today, 
How good would it be? It'd be worth 100 million pounds. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Yeah, brilliant. Excellent. Thanks, Graham. No problem. Has anyone got any questions that I'd like to ask Graham? Yeah, James, do you want to come to the front? Right. Go for it. Uh, obviously, like, uh, technology in sport and sport science has come on like phenomenally over the last 10 years. Uh, what do you think is going to happen like, in the future? Like, near future? Or... Well, I'll, 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 I'll look back at you. What do you what think, do you think, think is going to happen? Gonna happen? I don't know, but like, <laughs> uh, it's obviously going to improve a lot more, but like, are they going to stop? Because there's not much more you can do, really, is it? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll counter that argument, argument by, by saying you saying both. Do you know what I mean? So you've, so you've got, got a level of performance in the last, in the last five, five years of 100 meter sprinting that people are hitting a threshold and no one's ever going to break it. We're physically as strong, we're fast and thin. Then you saying both comes along, he's an absolute freak of nature and he thinks he's going to run 9.4 for 100 meters. So everything can change. Everything can change. It's how you adapt to that change. So I've got no, no doubt, doubt for someone, someone out there that's perfecting a new technique that's going to change it within an instant and everyone will have to catch up. Um, so I'll ask you a question, I've got no clue. But the best, and this is why Sir Alex Ferguson, and I'm not a Man U fan anyway, that's why Sir Alex Ferguson is the most successful manager in the Premier League history, because he adapts to everything new in the game better than anyone else. Brilliant. Thank you. Anyone else have a question? Yeah. What are the teachers, Mr. Cook's got, got a question, is that he's a keen footballer himself, or he likes to think so? Uh, One minute, I'll get the <laughs> In terms of, you mentioned about the data that you collate at the end of every day in terms of every yep, training yep. session. Is that data freely available to compare to other clubs and other academies? No. no. Ah, right. we, 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 we don't cross-reference it. We, cross we, we benchmark our players against themselves and their best stats. stats. We find, we find that if we dilute, dilute it by bringing other people into the mix, mix invariably there are, there are differences, differences in the way the data is taken and how it's applied. So if we do a skin fold test for body fat, we, we have an accredited specialist in that with a certain level of expertise and he does every single one so we get replication and we have the same areas that's targeted so we have it to be, um, you, can, you can compare it easier rather than if you get it from someone else. Uh, and, and also, also we don't want anyone to know how fast our lads are. Right, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Another question. My friend works for Newcastle, and he yeah, does yeah. all the he does all the, the video of the games, and he breaks it all down. So for it's not it's not, it's not ben, ben, is it? Is it? No, he's like called Callum Little. He okay. Works okay. For the academy. Yeah. yeah. And he sits in front of a computer six days a week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Up to eighteen hours breaking down under nines. Under yeah, 10s, yeah. under 11s. Do you have that facility at your club as well where we can analyse each player to say what they're doing, what they've covered in terms of GPS as well? Well, well we, have, we have, if you walk into our building, building, in our, in scouting, our scouting and recruitment, recruitment and talent, talent, talent ID, ID centre, centre, we have, we have five, five full time analysts for the academy alone. alone. Right. So, so their job, job all day every day, day is to actually cut, cut pieces, pieces that we want. want. To put it in perspective, we played a development game against Brighton. The next day, Four, Four coaches, coaches out of our department were sat in an office dealing, dealing with individual, individual players and their and part in the game. game. Every, every touch they had, had every contribution they made was broken down and analysed. As well as, as, well as giving them a DVD, DVD on the day of the game, game. we then bring, bring them back, back in and go through, through it. it. We let them then leave the review as to what they want to get out of it and then we say our points. Because we find that if we talk at kids, I don't know if you find the same, kids will listen for a little bit. And then, and then they'll, they'll tell, tell you what you want to hear. So, so what do you think, think about that? that? And he'll go through the checklist of things, things that he should say, say not what he really thinks. Think. So we give him the so DVD, DVD, let him watch it, it, then come back, back in, in, and then we feed it into them. And we do that for every single game. So from 9 up to 21, we've got all of those teams and we have that facility to do it for every single player. And it's their homework from under 9 upwards to review the game. Right. So, yeah, we... We try, we try to incorporate, to incorporate it as, as much as, as we can. Great. Yeah. Thanks very much. Anyone have any questions? Anyone else? Anyone? Yeah, Richie? Yeah. What's the best ground you've ever played at as a footballer? Uh, Old Trafford. 
St. James's. St. James's. I missed, I missed Anfield, Anfield, but I played, but I played at um, the Millennium, Millennium Stadium, Stadium as well. As well. Um, um, I would have said, said Old Trafford is an absolute, absolute joke. joke. It's, it's massive, massive huge, huge, it's great. great. The only problem, the only is, problem is you're playing against Man United, United, so you're going to get spanked. Get spanked. <laughs> um, in, terms in terms of the new ones, the Emirates is absolutely beautiful. It is beautiful. It's sensational. Yeah, I'd say it's out of the Emirates and Old Trafford. Good, thank you. Anyone else? Anyone? Go on, Emma. Well, Liam was, Liam was playing in a, in a game at St. James' Park tonight and he wants to know what the slope's like for a left back. Because um, he's, he's worried that he's worried they're going to get battered by the Newcastle reserves tonight. It's not, it's too, not bad. too bad, just don't, don't go, go forward. forward. <laughs> that's his only outlet. Yeah, that's his only outlet. <laughs> that's, all I'm good, that's all I'm good at, Graham, just run in. <laughs> Um, I think one of, one of the things that some of the lads were, were, when we were thinking about and they're probably all too scared um, was what it was like to play against Cristiano Ronaldo. And as a, <laughs> as a, obviously, as a, as a full-back, um, you're, obviously you're, you're, you, you were tasked with marking him um, and whatever. So can you tell us what it was like in terms of the preparation, what you had to do in terms of your homework on Ronaldo, and then what it was like actually facing up to the prospect of playing against probably you know one of the best players in the world, if not you know, the best, and... Maybe, maybe one of the, you know, the better wingers of all time. Okay. okay. Well, well, in the week leading up to the game, game I've, I've, you get given a DVD, or Reading did it, they give you a DVD of every attacking third entry that Man United, the Man United had, had in the game before. before. So, so, every time they got the ball over the halfway line and went to attack, basically, we were shown the ways they got the ball to Ronaldo, the ways he received the ball, his predominant foot, which way he went most times. And I've got to tell you, it was completely and utterly wrong. Because, because the first time he got the ball, he ran at me, I was thinking, right, he's going to go inside here, he's going to throw a step over, and then he's going to do this. And he didn't, he just kicked it to the byline and legged it. So, whatever you want, you can do whatever you like in terms of preparation, you've just got to go and deal with it. Now, when I said Cristiano Ronaldo was 6 foot 1, probably 13 and a half stone, body fat of 6%, and he's got the quickest feet you've ever seen in your life. All you can Some try and do is get as many people around him as possible. Because if you play against him one on one, he, he's going to kill you. I don't care who you are. Unless you're actually called someone of that ilk. He's just so good. Um, what we tried to do to him was limit the path south of him. So with Skulls and Carrick playing in midfield, we tried to get the people around them so they couldn't play that 60, 70 yard ball out to him, which would give me time to get a little bit closer to him. Um, and for 80 odd minutes, we did it really well, and I did quite well against him. And, and then he just walked past me and scored, which was horrific. But they, he's just, in terms of lateral movement, I'm a fullback, so I'm quite good going side to side. His lateral movement, I would say, over a five yard period, he would beat me by two, maybe two and a half every time. If we went at the same time, his side step from side to side is an absolute joke. So if you stand up, John. You turn and face your, 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 class. your class. If you took two strides to your right, right. in the in time, the time it, took it took it to do that, that Cristiano Ronaldo, Ronaldo can go about, go about 15, 15 yards of the ball. <laughs> right, so, right, so, do it again? again? What, quickly or slowly? I thought I that thought was that you was being quick. quick. Uh, uh, I was only half pace. <laughs> go on and do, do, do a half pace then. Right, right, so, so you see how wide Mr. Tate is? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to say that, John. Um, in terms of the, the speed that he covered, that gap there, those two strides, Ronaldo's whole body would be outside where he is, and he'd be five yards towards the screen. So, to put that in context, you can try him from side to side, some, Some people, people are just genetically, genetically physically, physically more, more capable. capable. And he and is without that the most, most capable athlete, athlete I've ever I've had. had. Once you once marry that to his hard work and his technique, he's, he's nearly unstoppable. unstoppable. I talked I to a uh, Man United coach, coach and he said and they, they spent six months. months. Have you ever seen that free kick he does where he gets it up and over the wall and he doesn't spin at all side to side? They spent six months adjusting the placement of his foot and the placement of his left hand by four inches. That's all they did. They analysed it to such a degree that they needed to change 
one, one thing, thing which the placement is four, four, four inches, inches. And, and then they, they discovered they needed they to change the placement of his hand four inches and it took them six months but that's the level of detail the very very best operator so raw talent is got Raw talent, talent combined, combined with hard work, work is, is unbeatable. unbeatable. Yeah, excellent. Wonderful. Right, there's not... Right, got one more. Yeah, Liam's got one more question. And I think we'll wrap it off there, Greg. No, no. I haven't I got a Ferrari. Ferrari. <laughs> in terms of the championship winning team that you played in, obviously there were some great players in there of yourself, Steve Sidwell, yeah. um, Dave Kitson, Shane, uh, Kevin Doyle. Yeah. Um, who, who's the best player you've played with? Uh, Darren, uh, Darren Fletcher, Fletcher from Manu. Right. I, I, I played for him for Stockton. He's just, just well, well, going, going back to what I said about Premier League, League players being, being able, able to do everything. everything. Strong, physically able, two, two very, very good, good feet. feet. The problem, the problem with him at Man United, United is. is